Welcome to the No Face Show. And, you know, what a great time to move into the secret sauce section. We've been giving tips all throughout, but let's kind of like dial in. Let's kind of focus on just giving tips uh, throughout all the aspects of, of the music industry. We could talk for hours on the secret sauce section, so we'll cut it at some point. But for now, let, let's just get started. So if you want to give a few tips on uh, to just to begin, right, to just begin in order, let's, let's begin with the beginning of the music creation process. Like what tips would you give to up and coming artists to find artists to collaborate, workflow tips to c- connect with artists, uh, especially online and, and kind of like the songwriting composition portion. Kind of like feel free to maybe tell us what you what you think, what you think work, works best right now. Well, I mean, I, I released some little videos recently. You guys put one up. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it's just, you, you have to look at what's working out there right now. And you have to take a little bit of everything and then put it into what you're doing. Um, you know, when Billie Eilish came out, she basically did the complete opposite with what was working in the music industry. And it worked. But that was a big gamble. She rolled the dice on putting that music out because it was just, what is this? People either loved it or they hated it. Yep. Um, and it worked out well. And, and the songs were fantastic. And Phineas did an amazing job putting them together. But the reality is, I think the safest move is to, you know, put out, you have to put out music that is kind of sonically sounding like music that's been coming out Um, and sounds, you know, what sound choices, what 808s are you using? What snare are you using? There's packs that are just popular. And, you know, if so-and-so is using it and it's working, okay, maybe you want to add a little of that in there. You don't, you know, I'm not saying don't be creative and do your own thing. You could do that. And that's always great. But in doing so, you're taking a much bigger risk of the music just not connecting because it's just a little too off the beaten path of what the listener is used to hearing right now. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't want to you don't want to follow too much, but you do want to take elements of music that is out there working, especially within the EDM electronic world. There's elements that just work. And so maybe take those elements and use them in a way that is a little bit more creative. But at the same time, when a radio programmer or a playlister hears it, they think, oh, it'll fit with this song or this song. It has a place sonically as opposed to, well, this just is totally different. It's really cool, but I don't know where to put it. Mm -hmm. So it's that perfect balance between see what works, use it and make it different, right? If you're too unique, you're unfortunately not going to be able to succeed in the mainstream mainstream world, maybe more of the right. underground, but you're definitely not in the mainstream. And if you're too cheesy, they won't sign you because they got something else that sounds exactly right. the same. And Max was mentioning that he's mentioned it in all his epi- in all the episodes we did with him where he said, if, if you send to a playlist or something that sounds like Calvin Harris and you're like, hey, look at this, it sounds like Calvin Harris, the playlist or the radio uh, a and R will be like, why? Well, I got Calvin Harris. Why do I got to right. play you? If you sound like Calvin Harris and, and that was, right. that's something really great. That we already have mentioned. Calvin Harris inside yeah. the mix. And I tell <laughs> exactly. artists all, you know, when I get, I get demos all the time and I listen and I'm like, you sound just like Olivia Rodrigo. You sound just like Sia. And that's great that you can mimic that artist, but we already have that artist. You know, so, it, you know, what is, who are you as an artist? It, you can use things, which I always did when I was in music. I took elements of other artists that I had heard growing up. I didn't copy them completely, but I took little elements from maybe five different artists and I created my own super character of artist using like, you know, I, I said in a past video, make your own all-star team. You take, you know, the greatest attribute of the first baseman. You take the greatest attribute of the quarterback. You put that into your own character. Well, that's music is the same thing. You just take a bunch of different elements that are known to work and then find who you are within those elements, whether you're the producer, the singer, the writer. But to copy something and say, well, geez, this sounds like exactly like so-and-so, that's never going to work because we already have that person. So who are you? as an artist. And if you, you know, you're kind of going down the Bruno Mars path. Okay, cool. You're not Bruno Mars, but man, like you, you've taken some of what he's done and you've put it into what you're doing. That's great. Just don't copy someone completely because that's never going to get you anywhere. 
I love that metaphor, create your all-star team. That's literally like if, if someone has to leave this episode with a, with a sentence, that's, that's amazing. Create that all-star team, get your favorite artists and, and do that. And just thinking of some artists, especially within the EDM industry that have done that, like you see some people like Skrillex. Skrillex has reinvented himself so many times. He just released an incredible song that we analyzed last week with the Office Academy. And, and it's just so creative and he gets different elements. So many influences from the current hip hop world uh, mixes it with like hard hitting like dubstep sounds and, and, and like melodic like trans music. And suddenly he makes this like incredibly melodic yet hard hitting uh, and, 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 and incredible beat, you know? And I love that he's doing that. Other mm -hmm. artists that come to my mind like San Holo who literally created the genre of feature bass within EDM where he was like, hey, what if I get the big synth of big room and the uh, drums of hip hop and put it together at a slower beat? Boom, he there came up go. with the genre. So I love that, that, uh, that metaphor, the all-star all team, create your all-star team. And, Absolutely. And it's, it's great that as artists, we get to do that. It's not like no one's well, you, not letting you it. Do makes, it makes it exactly. And like, even in food, we've seen a massive explosion when it comes to fusion of food. They're taking this and mixing it with that. And it's like, oh my God, I never thought of that. It tastes amazing. We'll do the same thing with music. I've done that my whole life with music was, well, you know, maybe I could take something from a heavy metal song and I could put it with an R&B song, but then have an EDM feel to the whole thing. And people initially are like, that's going to sound terrible, but it's music. There's always a way to find it, to make it work. It's just having the vision and you, it's not going to work every time, but it, it is, I always have called it that, the all-star team. Take the best elements from a bunch of different things that were really great and find a way to make them one with your style. And, uh -huh. and, and Skrillex it, has done that. I mean, his, Skrillex has done that over and over again. Yeah, he's done You're it like right. six times. He's reinvented himself so many times. And that's what I love about him, that right. he's just able to dominate like that. And Another thing that I love about that metaphor is that when you're doing that, you're really not creating anything new. You're really not inventing anything new. You're just taking what you know works and putting it together. The, all you're Correct. doing is making sure it sounds good together. And if you're able to succeed with doing that, like just thinking about it, you're really not creating anything that it's hard to make. You're just copying little or getting inspired by different segments and creating something incredible. So, right. I mean, the greatest even, creations <laughs> usually aren't original. I mean, you know, Max Martin didn't create pop music. He just took elements of the past from different genres and put them together in a style that no one had ever heard before. But nothing about what he's done or what Dr. Dre has done or, or what any of these great producers, none of it was original by them. Somebody else had already done it 10 times. They just realized, well, I could take bits and pieces and I could make something that feels original but it's made up of parts of things that we've already heard and done before. Yeah. I mean, I love that. I love that. I love that. Concept. You know, like so you when, when I write a up. song, sometimes I will tell an artist like, Hey, have you ever thought of this? Uh, listen to a song that you really love. And um, instead of the, you know, you hear the melody of the vocal, what's the harmony line to that melody. Maybe the harmony line can actually be the lead harmony to your song. Because if the melody line is really amazing, well, what does the harmony line sound like? It's probably going to be pretty cool too. So all of a sudden, you just take the harmony of a really great vocal and you make that harmony your melody to your song. And so it's just being creative. I've written songs sometimes. I'll write to the same production. I'll take a, a production of a song and I'll just take the instrumental. And then I'll just write my own melody to it because we know that the instrumental was a hit. The, the music was a hit and the chord progression was a hit. And the melody they chose was just one melody within many melodies that you could find within that structure. So if you want to write a song, sometimes I think we'll just take a great song, remove the lyric and the melody, and then you rewrite your own melody to that song because mm -hmm. the structure is already there. So there's, there's so many ways to take what already is and make it new again. You're just repurposing something. And, you know, if it's, if it was something really great, well, maybe it's going to be really great for you too, because the essence of what made it great is already there. 
Yeah, and and for other producers out there too, you could literally do the opposite. Take an acapella, an acapella that you know works really, really, really well, and build exactly. an instrument and build an instrumental to it. And obviously, you can't release it you know, with that acapella, so you can always, you know, get another writer to to, right. to write something else to it. But suddenly, you've you've built an instrumental on something that you know works. So you know, exactly. that's, that's awesome. I'm so glad we we brought that up in the secret sauce section because that's gonna be an awesome clip. <laughs> that we're gonna clip so really 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 good stuff over here so it's kind of moving on